Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutch Gaming and a new guide on the channel. Uh, just going over Heat Shiver because I've had a lot of comments asking um, how to fit into the build. Is it the best helmet to run? Can I just stick it on and I double my damage? So I thought I'd go through firstly how Freeze works, then how Heat Shiver works, and then in my opinion the pros and cons of running or not running Heat Shiver. Before we get into that, I just need to apologise because I was blind drunk yesterday at my work party and decided on the way back on the train that that was a good time to respond to all my YouTube questions and nearly all the questions were about Heat Shiver uh, and I got a bit overwhelmed because there was loads of them and I started spouting a load of bollocks, let's be honest. Um, some of what I said was true, some was rubbish, some was a bit rude. So apologies if I offended anyone, didn't mean to and probably disregard anything I've said yesterday because it was a bunch of crap. So let's actually jump into the purpose of the video. Now I've got my uh, humble apology out of the way. Freeze, let's start with freeze. So freeze is essentially, you need to hit with a certain amount of cold damage to be able to apply freeze. So POE Wiki explains it pretty simply. Base freeze duration is 0.06 seconds per 1% of ammo threshold that you breach. And a monster's maximum life is essentially the threshold. So 1% of monster's life, if you do that much damage, you'll freeze for 0.06. However, freezes don't actually apply until you reach 5% threshold. So you need to do 5% of the monster's max life in a hit. And it's 0.3 seconds is the length of that freeze. So it's given here a simple example. 2 million life means you need to do 100,000 cold damage to hit that 0.3 seconds. What you can do, however, is increase the duration of freeze. Don't confuse this with ailment effect. Ailment effect does nothing for freeze. So if you get increased duration of freeze or increased duration of elemental ailments, that can make a difference because that just means you essentially don't need to do as much damage um, to hit the cap because the duration is lengthened. So let's say you increase the duration by 100%. Instead of your base freeze doing 0.06, it does 0.12. So you have to do much less damage to reach that threshold. And in most heat shiver builds, you want to be maxing this where you can uh, without compromising too much. So now let's talk about heat shiver. So for those that don't know, heat shiver has been something that's been played ever since the unique rework because it is a good way to get a ton of damage if you consistently freeze. So what it gives you is 1% of cold damage as extra fire damage per chill on an enemy. So let's say on average you get 20% chill, that's 20% of your cold damage is automatically done as extra fire damage. Where it really, really takes off is 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies. So it's not like a buff that you proc and it lasts an X amount of time, it's only gonna be valid when that enemy is frozen. Last thing to mention is any enemy in the game can be frozen, but big bosses, guardians, pinnacle bosses, things like that, don't actually visibly get frozen and their action speed doesn't get reduced to zero because it would just trivialize content. But it doesn't mean in terms of the mechanics they can't be frozen. They still have that threshold. If you breach it, they're going to get frozen. So it sounds like a no brainer. Well, if I freeze, I throw heat shiver on and I do double damage. But there's lots of things you need to take into account before you decide whether you want to run heat shiver. The first thing is I think heat shiver excels if you want to do things um, like invitations, pinnacle bosses, things like that, because that's where you need the extra damage and it does make a big difference. The issue with that and the reason I don't like it as a mapping build is there are tons of mods that make it much, much harder to freeze. So let's say you just reached the ailment cap for Eater of Worlds. You want to farm Eater of Worlds invitations. You're obviously gonna to wanna to alk them up to get lots of quantity on them. But there are a lot of map mods that basically mean you have to do loads more damage. So if they take 40% reduced damage from crit and only crits can freeze, you basically need to find 40% more damage from your build to get back to that threshold. If they have 50% increased cold resistance, you're again not doing as much cold damage. So you need to find that damage somewhere else or basically have a build that's 40% more powerful than it needs to be. You have increased life. Again, we know from looking at PoEDB that freeze is based on a percentage of a monster's maximum life. If you get 45% increased monster life, you're not going to be doing that. I have no idea how energy shield works because it's not life. If energy shield gets added to life and that adds to the max, then you're absolutely in trouble with that mod. And then you've got things like 75% chance to avoid elemental ailments, which means every three and four hits, you're not applying chill and you're not applying freeze, which means that again, massively lowers your damage. 
All these mods are realistically ones you have to avoid. And that's why I don't like recommending it as a build because you might get all your characters set up, run a map mod that doesn't have any of these mods and you breeze through it, the boss gets frozen, it might be a conqueror map, you go in, you freeze the conqueror, you melt him and then the next map you go in, you're not procking any of your heat shiver because of these map mods and it just feels a lot, lot worse. So yes, it can work as a damage dealer but there are lots of things you need to account for before you decide whether it's a build you want to do. And that's the main reason I haven't bought a build guide out because each person's individual build that they've got means they might have to tinker slightly differently. So that's, that's the one reason I, I haven't bought a build guide out and I don't particularly like recommending it because unless you really know what you're doing, you're gonna end up with the worst build. So let's talk about what I've done to change this build in case you wanted to take the build guide I've just bought out and just tinker it to add in heat shiver. You don't need to do a lot. And if you've got gear similar to mine, you'll be freezing anything up to pinnacles, um, elder, shaper, things like that, if they don't have any map mods that affect it. So first thing I needed to do is convert all my damage to cold. So in my build guide, I was running anomalous tornado shot to get easy conversion for the rest of my build. You can still do that because technically one in three hits, you're gonna be converting fully to cold, but then the other two, you're not. And I think if you're gonna invest in heat shiver, you need to do it all the way. So you need to convert all your damage. I ended up being able to do it quite cheaply because I had these gloves sitting around that I was using for an ice shot conversion heat shiver build that I was looking at earlier in the league. And I've had a relic drop that converts fizz to cold. So with this and my gloves and my tree, I'm fully converted. If you're not, there's two ways of doing it. One, Prim Sorrow, wouldn't recommend it. We're already given up quite a lot to run this helmet. If we run Prim Sorrows as well, we've got a helmet that take away the bonuses gives us Mediocre fire res, mediocre cold res. Prim Sorrow gives us conversion, but it basically gives us a bit of cold resistance and nothing else. As an overall all round character, you're gonna be running around with about three and a half K life and it doesn't feel great. If you want to fully convert, I'd recommend spending the money to do it and it can be quite expensive. If you're gonna run rare gloves, you need 30 plus percent conversion on the gloves naturally, which I think has to be unveiled from Syndicate. You can't craft it because then you can craft 25% on your gloves, which does mean getting your implicit to T2 on Eater, which obviously costs money because it's gonna be orbs of conflict um, and a few um, Syrian Exarch orbs to get you know, a higher mod so it's easier for you to elevate it. So there is costs involved. It's not only the cost, you're probably gonna really struggle to hit spell suppression cap. It depends how much of a stickler you are. Most people are happy running around with 90% spell suppression. If you're someone that wants 100%, it makes it difficult because to roll the conversion you need with something like life and spell suppression becomes very difficult because the physical is a prefix and once you've unveiled it, you've unveiled it. Spell suppression is a suffix and it can't be deterministically targeted. So what you might have to do is end up with a ton on your boots and a ton on your chest piece. You still might not hit it. So what you end up having to do is take these two nodes, which means you've got to remove nodes somewhere from your tree so yes, you've got your spell suppression back, but you've either dropped life or damage. So back on track to how I started testing. What I like to do when I test things is just change things a bit at a time so I know what difference it's making. So the first test I did from my first build is I've just got my cold conversion up and running, got heat shiver, which I had to buy one with a reservation enchant to fit my auras in, which was two to three divines. And then I basically mapped to see what it was like. Now I had Trinity in my links, and it was, yeah, fine in mapping. I was freezing um, enemies. I was freezing map bosses, which I expected. But overall, I didn't notice that much performance difference because it was trivializing that content anyway. I did notice, however, again, when the map mobs are unfavorable, it didn't feel as nice. Whereas when you're doing like a proper Trinity build and you're equaling your LE damage, having resistance to one type of damage doesn't quite shut you down um, as much. I decided, right, now it's time to test the Guardian map, see how I get on, and I was nowhere near freezing them. It felt bad, and it just took a lot longer than the original build. So what I had to look at was what was making me not being able to freeze, and it was a combination of a couple of things. Firstly, I was running Trinity. The reason you would run Trinity with Heat Shiver is when you do freeze, you get 100% as fire damage, Trinity procs, and Trinity brings a ton of value as a gem. It gives you loads of elemental damage and elemental penetration. And even with Omni, you still get decent DPS increases from Pen, unless you've got tons of omniscience. And since we're running Heat Shiver and either a pair of gloves that we're not aiming for attributes or Crim Sorrows, 
we're not going to be stacked on omniscience. And then the other thing I needed to look at was GMP because it lowers the damage of each arrow. And I think that's what your freeze is based off of. So I had to realistically look at the build and go, this is never going to freeze guardians because if this doesn't proc, other than the quality on it, which is 10% increased LE damage, it doesn't do anything. I'm then left with a five link with GMP and this does less projectile damage. So I'm never ever going to be able to get the damage to freeze these enemies unless my build is absolutely stacked, which for like 40, 50 divines, whatever we built that character for is never going to be the case. So I did some tinkering. The first thing I did was I just took out GMP and I stuck in Awakened Vicious Projectiles and that worked. And on Guardians, I just about froze even with Trinity and it prop. The issue was I then went into Elder and Maven and I wasn't. And I've got no projectiles. Dying Sun is just not really a solution. It's very low duration. Yes, you can probably keep it up in mapping, but the build doesn't need help when mapping. And for bosses, you get to use it once and then it's gone. So using Dying Sun as like a band-aid to get projectiles was not an option. As I don't have plus arrows on my gear because it, it gets really expensive to do the build when you start adding arrows in. So I do just have my base arrows plus my ascendancy. So without Dying Sun and with dropping GMP, I have three arrows. It felt shit for mapping. Yes, I was freezing bosses, but with losing arrows, I wasn't actually getting any extra damage. Conclusion was, I do need to run GMP, without a doubt. So the only gem I could drop is Trinity. Trinity itself, if you plug everything into POB and you freeze, is more damaged than any other gem. The issue is, I wasn't freezing. So again, it's essentially a dead gem. So the six sync I settled on, which I've tested... Um, Elder, Maven, um, Guardians and Conquerors, and I've frozen all of them, is normal Tornado Shot because we don't need Anomalous anymore. Awakened Ellie Damage with Attacks. GMP, Qualityed Up. Divergent Inspiration. Awakened Vicious Projectiles, which is at the moment level one, um, and I still need to quality it up, and that will give me even more damage. And then increased crit damage. And with that setup, I did manage to freeze all of the bosses. However, Maven, I did notice on the brain phase and when my flask went up that it was very, very hit and miss as to whether I froze. So I would probably want even more damage to make sure I was comfortable doing that content. But again, I come back to map mods. And in fact, there's one I missed earlier. Less effective auras from your skills is going to make you not hit your threshold because your hatred is going to get massively gimped. And if you're running like a Herald of Purity to get more fizz, that's going to get really gimped as well. So that's going to mean you come under the threshold. So you've got five map mods that you basically can't run. There's then others that I tend to like to avoid, like minus max res, because I don't want to get annihilated. That's six map mods that you can't roll. If you just want to do invitations, yes, you could do it, and you're going to have to really specifically roll your invitations. But for a general mapper, I just feel it's better just to not go the heat shiver route and just get consistent overall damage from your build. That's my personal preference. It's going to be people that think totally different, and they're like, no, what I'd rather do is run it. If I run a map mod and it's horrible, then I need to know I need to improve the build. But it is quite hard to stack much more damage without going, not just the arrow route, but if you want to get lots more damage, you need to drop GMP, which means you do need a ton of arrows and you probably need to run Dying Sun um, for mapping and bossing because it does give you that extra. And that's kind of the problem that I find with the build is that nearly every build I look at doesn't run GMP because they've got two arrows in their bow, sometimes even three, and they've got one or two in their quiver, so they don't need the help. But a build that's under hundreds of divines, you kind of have to run GMP if you want to be able to fit more arrows into the build. Yeah, so to sum it up, if you do want to try it, change your gem links to the ones I've just gone through, get some gloves with full conversion, and get heat shiver, and that should be enough um, to freeze pinnacle bosses and guardians. However, like I said, you've got to watch out for map mods. Where do I think Heat Shiver shines? And it shines when you can really stack your damage because it becomes an uber boss obliterator. So there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people running Tornado Shot Heat Shiver uber boss killers. They are very, very high investment and they literally just go damage. They're super, super glass cannon. So it's probably not something you want as an all round build, but it absolutely does the job of destroying ubers. They will basically not worry about any defenses so they don't run evasion they don't run determination they just run all damage auras they will not be bothered about spell suppression not bothered about ailment avoidance and they don't care about life all they're caring about is how quickly they can kill those uber bosses 
even if you die, even if a boss has got three phases, if you can phase him every phase and take a death, you're going to complete that encounter. And again, you can juice it and juice it up. But you still have to be careful because uber bosses take a ton of damage to freeze because inherently they have a lot less damage. So if you were to ALK your uber Exarch or uber Eater and you get the wrong mods on it, you still might struggle with even what looks like an insanely powerful build. Um, so I think there are definitely cases for saying heat shiver should be run on the build, but I don't think it's wrong to say it shouldn't because I think you need to make a lot of compromises and you have to be very careful about the map mods that you run until you do get the damage where you don't have to worry about it. So let's say this setup that I've gone through in this guide, you then increase your damage by 30%. You could probably then safely run it, but it's expensive to do that. So like I said, I do think it has its place, but I don't think it's necessarily correct to say you're building it wrong if you don't run it because you do have to make a ton of compromises. And if you want to be able to ignore all map mods, you have to invest a lot of money into your damage and get your cold damage up really, really high. Uh, so I'm going to go through POB and explain how to look at whether you're freezing and reaching um, the caps that you need to. Uh, just need to point out quickly one more change I made to the build um, when I stuck in Heat Shiver is I dropped far Shot and I went Focal Point. Uh, mainly because where we're going to need the help to get that freeze is going to be bosses. Uh, so having tons and tons of increased mark effect is going to be better than far Shot because first it means you don't have to worry about where you stand. And secondly, you just get that consistent buff and increase uh, damage from your sniper's mark. So if you were in a build, so let's take this, for example, let's just take this POB. Um, I'll set my damage to how I think it would be in most cases. And this is how you need to really judge your freeze threshold. Um, so I'll run Vol Haste, but I've unticked it because that's certainly not going to be up at the start of a boss fight. Uh, and I've just gone in, I've put my flasks on because they are going to be up at the beginning and they're going to be up sort of twice. So in terms of boss damage, it's probably... 15 to 20 seconds flask uptime. Uh, but what I've gone in is you obviously, the enemy isn't going to be frozen. So you need to set it as if you are about to freeze the enemy, but you haven't frozen them yet. And um, so it's given me um, combined DPS of 1.28 million on my tornado shot. So what you then need to do is go into calculations in POB and just hover over freeze duration. So the bit that's important, you can ignore everything other than for freeze to apply for the minimum of 0.3 seconds. Target must have no more than 9.5 million element threshold. So how do you know what that is? So to understand what that is, you need to go into somewhere where it records the boss's stats. So PoEDB is the best place. Um, so all it is telling you is for each Maven, what is their element threshold? So we're going to item level 84 because I assume that's normal Maven. And you can see the element threshold is 6.5 million. Now if you go back to POB, it says as long as I am hitting as per in this and my flasks are up, as long as the boss doesn't have 9.5 million element threshold, I'll be able to freeze for 0.3 seconds. Um, so with the damage you're doing, we'd freeze for slightly longer. However, I have got my flask up, and then in something like Maven that's quite a long fight, you, you're probably not going to have them up, um, so we'll just remove them. We'll go back in, and we'll have a look, uh, and it now says it's 8.8 .8 million is the threshold, and Maven has a threshold of 6.5. However, your damage is obviously going to go up and down depending on the roll of your hit. I don't have a 100% crit chance, especially with my diamond flask down. I only have 65% crit chance. So there's other things you can do to make sure that you get that more consistent damage. Obviously, more crit chance is definitely going to help because it means more hits have a chance to freeze. So my crit chance of 65% is obviously not ideal because it's only just more than one in two that we've even got a chance of freezing. Every hit that doesn't crit is not going to freeze, so it doesn't really matter the damage that we do. And I think that's probably why I found the damage a little bit inconsistent, even though I was quite a bit above what was needed to hit the threshold. So there is lots of things, as I say, you need to take into account. Um, but this build in general felt okay. I didn't love it, but it felt all right. What you want to do is then you can put in map mods that might affect the enemy. If you just go in here um, and look at the stats here, we've put Guardian Pinnacle Boss. So let's say you rolled Eater of Worlds and you had plus 50% or 45 or 40% cold resistance. I'm going to put that up and let's put it up to an extra 40. That's now saying obviously our damage has gone right down to what we can do. So if we put that back to 50, it was 1 million. If we put it up to 90, it's 800,000. So then we go back in and have a look at our freeze and it says the element threshold is 6.6 .6 million. So now it's getting towards the area where you're not going to freeze consistently on a pinnacle boss. 
Um, again, if we just go into configuration, and then you've got the reduced crit here. So if we move this up to say enemy takes 45% reduced damage from critical strikes, this is our DPS, but this is our combined DPS, not just when we crit. So our crit's actually going to be lower. So then we go in and yeah, we're struggling again. The armor threshold is 6 million, but it has to be a crit and we're only critting 65% at a time. That causes a massive issue. And as you can see, the way POB calculates this is it just lowers your crit multiplier. Um, so if it was, you know, enemy takes 42% reduced damage from crit, it almost halves our damage. So that again is another map mod that if you want to be able to run it and overcome it, you've got to do a ton more damage. Um, and then the last one, which I'll have to plug into here because I can't seem to see it there, is something like 40% less effective non cursors Again, our damage absolutely plummets. If we take that out, it's a million. If we stick it back in, it goes down to 712,000. Again, we go over to calculations. And again, the ailment threshold is hovering between six and seven million. But I think that's if everything um, comes around and works perfectly because I've definitely had cases where I should be hitting a threshold and I haven't been. So that's just to kind of go over what difference the map mods uh, can do to affect your damage. Uh, and also just the last few tinkerings I've done and how you can use POB to work out whether you're anywhere near the correct threshold. Um, I think that covers off the video. Um, if anyone's got any more insight into heat shiver, if there's something I'm blatantly missing um, that would help, then please let me know. It's something I'm going to do a bit more tinkering with. And if I really, really can get some currency, I am going to try and build a version that's going to obliterate Ubers, uh, but it's going to take some currency. Um, again, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has helped some people. Take care and see you in the next one.